<laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I have Hello, Tammy. <laughs> I have my special unless you're, unless you're on delay and then good at what <laughs> part this is. <laughs> my special guests, Judith Fine and Paul Ross, all the way from Santa Fe, New Mexico. How exciting. Hola. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Well, and we're happy to be here. My audience is probably wondering, oh, who is that? Uh, unless they know they've read your book or heard of you or seen your photography, beautiful pictures. But Paul's a fantastic photographer, and <laughs> Judith is a fabulous writer that takes people on travel journeys. Um, yeah, both you and Paul's photography and your stories, wow. I feel right there with you talking about culture's being with the people in your stories. And... What we try to do, both uh, through photography and Judy's words, we both do the same thing. Uh, she writes in pictures and my photos tell stories. But the whole thing is to make you, the reader or online viewer, uh, feel like part of the experience. I'm there now and in the future I want to be there physically in person nice and that's exactly how I felt <laughs> when I read the first book um, life is a trip <laughs> how hard to find words magic mystical and real you capture it all <laughs> okay, you're hired that's it <laughs> <laughs> Tammy did you read did you read the other books yeah um I've read two of them so far your latest okay. your latest but if, if uh, your audience would like to hear about it, I'll tell you not just the names of the book, but why I wrote the books and what I'm hoping to contribute to this big ocean of, uh, of life that we all share together. Very nice. I'd love to hear. <laughs> okay. Go for it. And I also want okay. to hear the story of how the two of you met. <laughs> Whichever one you want to tell me first. Are you there? Yeah, we're there. All right, we're back. So which do you want first? Do you want the story of how we met? Or do you want the story of how I wrote the stories? It's your story. <laughs> Just either one. Either one. Just go with your intuition. Okay, I'll start with how we met, because for me, it's one of the weirdest, most mystical meetings ever. I had just been living in North Africa and Europe for 10 years. I was like E.T., and I came back to the United States, and I got hired to be a Hollywood screenwriter. I hadn't been to a movie in 17 years. I didn't know anything about it, and suddenly, I'm a Hollywood screenwriter with an agent, and I didn't know one person in L.A., and my sister said, you're such an innocent. How can you be in that city of sharks by yourself? So she stood up at a faculty meeting. She was teaching at a university, and she stood up at a faculty meeting. She said, does anybody know anybody in L.A. that my sister could call? I had one name, Paul Ross. All right. So that's me. That's, that's he. That's he. <laughs> so we decided we were going to meet at a Thai restaurant. When we got there, the Thai restaurant was being demolished. It was a work site. And there was a work site, and there was this fake door, and that was the Thai restaurant. And I was standing on one side of the door, and he showed up with daisies. I mean, a guy coming with daisies to a Thai restaurant that's being demolished. All right, long story short, he waded through the rubble of the restaurant. We met. We started to walk to find another restaurant, and he put his arm around me. And I went, excuse me, like, you know, I can't do this dating thing. He said, well, why don't we just say we're in a relationship? I said, what are you talking about? You just met me in a ruin 13 seconds ago. What are you talking about? And we go to, the, to another restaurant. We walk in. We're ordering. And I see him staring at me. And I said to him, what's going on? Why are you staring at me? And he said, because you'd be very difficult to break up with. So what are you talking about? We just, well, that was how we met. Mm -hmm. And you know what? <laughs> he was right. She's always telling me that Time is not linear. Many cultures believe that. She embraces that. 
that things are all happening simultaneously and maybe there's a quantum explanation for that that I'm not conversant enough to tell you. But uh, And yet, when I did that, demonstrating it, she couldn't believe it. And it was completely out of character for him. He's not a flirt. He's not aggressive. He would. This is it. You wanted the story? Okay, now I'll tell you the other two things, and then you take it away wherever you want to go. So my first book, Life is a Trip, The Transformative Magic of Travel, we have been travel journalists, and Paul, a photojournalist, for 21 years now. And it's very, very lucky that we are sent all over the world. We're invited to write about places. I never write anything that's not true. So whereas most writers focus on the hotels and the food, I focus on what happens when you travel that transforms you. So that when you leave on a trip and you return from a trip, you're different. You're different in some way. So life is a trip. The transformative magic of travel is 14 stories about cultural encounters we had that made a change in my life. And I'm hoping, wink, wink, that it'll impact you, the reader. The second book is called The Spoon from Minkowitz. Mm-hmm. And I'm obsessed with ancestry, and it has nothing to do with names and dates. But from the time I was a little child, my mother's mother, my grandmother, I loved her. I had a very, very difficult home life. You know, you know, we could all tell our, story, our war stories, okay? <laughs> Mine was Kosovo, what can, I, what can I tell you? Anyway, but I got along wonderfully with my grandmother. I loved her. And I was always saying, Grandma, your accent, where are you from? And she'd say, far. I said, Grandma, what was it like? And she'd say, Fair. Well, that was my conversation with my grandmother about where I came from. And over the course of my life, they didn't talk about it. Many American immigrants, people who came to America, they didn't want to talk about the old still country. Don't. Mm-hmm. They still don't. Yeah, they, true. Still don't. They, true. they didn't want to talk about the old country. They wanted to put it behind and mm-hmm. their children should be American. Well, I got six facts. The facts were so minor. Tammy, one of them was the floor of the house was made of goat excrement. Okay, what do you do with that? <laughs> Another one was I picked tobacco leaves with women when I was 10. Okay, what do I do with that? Long story short, we were invited to, and I said, Grandma, where was it? Russia. Well, today the boundaries have changed, and I found out that it was in Ukraine, and we were invited to Russia. It may become Russia again, the way things are going. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I know. And, huh? but, and Paul said, let's go, let's go there. Let's go to the village. Let's go to Minkowitz. And we went there. I cried from the second I arrived till the second I left. And I found out that Paul's grandparents are from the same village of maybe 200 uh, people, right? You know, wow. you know, tiny. Okay, that's book number two. But it's not, it's, yes, it's my story about I wanted to find out what's left of everybody's ancestry there. It's not just modern cities, but right beneath the surface. Here's how you look, here's what you find. And it's the importance of knowing where you come from. It's kind of a combination of ancestry memoir and a true life detective story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a way of connecting. And the last book I just wrote, and then that's all I have to say, it's your turn after, is called How to Communicate with the Dead and how cultures do it around the world. When I was 19 years old, my father died horribly. Mm -hmm. And I used to go to the cemetery to just have some connection. And one day I heard a man's voice speaking and I, oh, I was so embarrassed because I was standing there at my father's grave, you know, sobbing, and there was nobody there. And that was the beginning of a lifelong uh, communication with the dead. And I never told anybody. And then, what does a writer do? I never told anyone, so I wrote a book about it. And I take you around the world with Paul and with me to every culture we went to and how all of them believe that life is not the end, how they communicate with the dead. Death is not the end. Life is the beginning. And uh, how other cultures do it. And then at the end, I tell you how you can do it. That's my story, Tammy. That's it. I I love that book, too. I love both the books I've read, and I want to read more i'm going to read the others but i have to share this um right before i sent you the link (laughs) i have an apple just you know i didn't even notice the apple sitting there and it started rolling right when i sent you the link (laughs) so what do you make of that oh a message a message that all is good (laughs) all is yeah 
I knew maybe it was that, I knew it was a message maybe, for you. Hmm? Maybe the the uh, the Apple is updating. They think it's the the Apple we have, which is a computer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like That's that. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. Always communicating, you see, in different ways. You just have to pay attention. Yeah, you can be something new, a fruit whisperer. <laughs> cute, cute. Oh. So, yes, I want to say if anybody picks up your book or, or reads your blogs or anything like that, looks at the beautiful photography, um, they're all, you'll just, if you're not feeling good or you just want to, you know, try something different, I just know that each person's going to feel wonderful because um, the stories are spellbinding. Um, it'll change a person's soul, their eyes, their ears. It'll just be different for sure. <laughs> what a beautiful thing to say. Thank you. <laughs> the one reason that uh, we started putting photos in the book, <clears throat> it wasn't for my ego, although I enjoy that it's there <laughs> and it's a way for us to participate together, was at least in the first book, Life is a Trip. Some of the adventures were so exotic and so crazy that... Here's the proof it really happened. Here's yes. a picture of it. Yes. Or the person that we talked to. Yes. Otherwise, you might just not believe it. It's so true. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I remember some of your stories, Paul, how you're like, wow, I'm usually not like thinking about that or something. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you, was this like a birthday dream come true, traveling and meeting people from exotic lands? And also, do you have a birthday wish that if you want to discuss, especially with this past year with COVID? Oh, yeah. Well, I just recently had a birthday of mine. I guess that's what, what's triggering this. And uh, every, that's a time always for reflection, sometimes regret, uh, and sometimes with especially being locked down in the pandemic, uh, wishes for a better and immediate future. But we've been traveling all throughout. Uh, how do you travel when you can't go anywhere? Mm -hmm. And we've been doing a series of magazine articles for a, a local public, a regional publication, where we go on picnics. And initially, I was doing all the cooking because I do. Uh, but then we thought when this became a regular column, we would not only go to uh, places that were local, all within a couple hour drive, no more than that, one day outing. Mm -hmm. And it would combine nature and history and uh, geology, all kinds of wonderful things in hikes that we'd forgotten about or maybe mm -hmm. never taken. Sometimes it's a visit to a local park. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know that park's there. I just haven't been there since I was a kid. Go again. It's different, different eyes, different experiences. And then when we started the regular column, I said, let's give some of the restaurants that were really hurting because here in New Mexico, they could be open, then they had to be closed, then they were open again, then they were closed again. <laughs> then you could only have like four people seated in your restaurant and then they stopped that, you know, they were all struggling. So we said, let's contact them and have them cater something and we'd tell them a place and they'd come up with something exotic. For instance, there was one of the largest volcano craters on the planet, Valles Caldera. It's about an hour from Santa Fe. Okay. And the chef said, oh, I have an idea for that. So he gave us a dessert consisting of a chocolate lava cake. Mm, delicious. <laughs> so, Mouth-watering. Yes, uh, I had thought about things on my birthday but I didn't feel deprived, even mm -hmm. after 14 months or whatever it was of lockdown, because this is the way we had been traveling and walking out in the open and very few people, if any, around, uh, we weren't worried about contagion. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a beautiful story. There's so many beautiful, um, yeah, mystical places there around Santa Fe or all in New Mexico Any within... Everywhere. Everywhere. But exactly. Yeah. If people just pick wherever up you live. and go an hour outside wherever they live, they'll see something new. You, you know, something has happened. Like you asked me, has this been, you know, since your birthday, you, know, you wanted to go on these trips? No. But ever since I was born, I was attracted to people who are not like me. Mm -hmm. I know me. I inhabit the skin. But I've always been interested in somebody 
who speaks a different language, comes from a different country, has a different color skin, has a different background, has a different religion. And I've always, always been interested in people who are not like me. Mm -hmm. Something about the way we're raised. First of all, your curiosity gets stumped out because you're told what you're supposed to think about everything and feel about everything and everybody's an expert and you listen to the experts. But more than that, you tend to gravitate toward people who are just like you. Well, then you're living in an insular box. But if you are online waiting to get into a movie, for example, remember when we used to go to movies, and um, <laughs> the person in front of you is wearing a turban. Instead of just, oh, the person has a turban, what if you said to the person, would it be okay with you if I asked you why you wear a turban? I can't imagine someone would not answer. But that reply opens up connection. You may get invited to a Sikh ceremony. It's mm -hmm. happened to us. Yes. And your life becomes an adventure, but you must go back and rekindle your childhood curiosity. Mm -hmm. Not just about what you know, frantically posting a photo that everybody else has posted of a restaurant or of a margarita you just had. But what about people who aren't like you? They're so interesting. They're your, they're your university of life all the time. And when you approach somebody and you're really asking questions because you're really interested, you can't believe what will evolve from that. The invitations, the information, the connections. Suddenly your life, it doesn't matter if you're in lockdown, your life becomes connected to this mm -hmm. huge network of humanity and you expand your life. And you're I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Okay. What if I'm in a foreign country, yes. I don't necessarily speak the language, I certainly don't know the culture, and in trying to communicate, I make a mistake. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. happens then? The best thing that can happen to you is make a cultural mistake. <laughs> so I'll I'll give you a couple of I, I can give you Paul I can give you a couple of examples because you were there. For, okay, we were in northern Thailand, and we had been walking for about eight or ten hours, and it was hot, and we came upon a man in the street in the town, and he was selling. Uh, musical folklore musical instruments mm -hmm. and Paul's very musical mm -hmm. and he started the guy let him play it and they were having a good time and my dogs were tired my I'd been on my feet a lot of hours walking and there was a little grassy spot I sat down on the grassy spot and I faced the musician and Paul and all of a sudden our guide comes up to me and slaps me on the head well I can assure you I don't let people <laughs> slap me on any part of my body but I couldn't believe it what had I done? When I was sitting down, my legs were stretched out in front of me. And the worst thing you can do in their culture is show someone the bottom of your feet or the soles of your shoes. But my legs were stretched out in front of me. I was sitting down. I had committed a cultural horrible offense. Do you think it killed me or the musician? Did Paul and the musician keep on playing? Yes. Did I fold up my legs? Yes. Did he buy an instrument? Yes. I've had many... I thought when he slapped you, I thought it was a percussion accompaniment. <laughs> <laughs> he was drumming on my head. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> so yeah. you will make mistakes. But if you come from an open place... I'll tell you one other. I think I wrote about it in the book you read. Um, the ancient Israelite Samaritans. You know when someone says he's a good Samaritan? Mm -hmm. The Samaritan were the ancient three of the ancient tribes of Israel who lived in the north. And there are still about 850 of them alive today. Wow. And I scored an interview with the high priest of the ancient Israelite Samaritans. Mm. Trust me, I interviewed heads of country, head of political party. It never, celebrities. celebrities of all kinds, it never fazed me. But a meeting <laughs> with the high priest of the ancient Samaritans? Are you kidding me? So we go in and I thought, oh no, what am I going to talk about? Well... We talked about the Bible okay. for an hour. We were best wow. friends. He had such an interesting take because he comes from such an, an ancient people. And we're talking and talking. And he mentioned something about a biblical story with a camel. And I said, oh, I ate camel. That was the end of my time with him. <laughs> he stood up. I had committed the worst. I had eaten camel. And 
I remember saying worse than pork. It's worse than pork. Oh, if you ate pork, you die on the wow. spot. I was just going to be tortured. Well, anyway, I wrote about what happened when I did that. But so my nickname became the Camel Eater, and you will survive cultural errors, but you will not survive a total lack of curiosity, a disconnection from other people, and a lack of interest in others. You will not survive that, but you will survive. Well, it's not a matter of surviving. I think it's a matter of, it's not, you will not be enriched. You have the opportunity, you're in a place, in a situation, and you just miss out on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't agree. I (laughs) agree when you phrase it differently. We phrase it. I'm much more eloquent. (laughs) Phrase it differently. I I think your soul suffers. When you live in a shutdown universe, that's it. That's my yes. everybody. Now we're in agreement. What about you, Tammy? What do you think about the subject? About the soul, and <laughs> you know, it's kind of like here. I'll I'll share a quick story. Um, with talking to whomever, I was climbing. There's a, a mountain here. We have a cow's mountain, and I went to the top. And at the top, there is a person in robes, a monk. And I did the same, like your book says. I walked up to him, you know, asked if I could take a photo, but um, asked him where he's from. And I learned something new and shared a nice what smile. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you where learn? he was from. I was in a hurry, so, um, yeah, we didn't talk too long. But it was just a nice gesture, um, sharing a smile. Um, that person seemed to really appreciate me reaching out. You know? Ah, that's interesting. Yes, but you see what you said? I was in a hurry. Yes. Right there. Yes. That is the locked door to life. <laughs> Why are we in a hurry? What am I in a hurry to do? What are you? What were you in a hurry to do on the top of a mountain with a monk in a robe? <laughs> I mean, you have, to, you have to rethink, not you, but one, yes. me, yes. everybody. You have to rethink your priorities. Like, why are you always rushing? Are you so important? You know, what, what's the story here? But if you, you know, there's, there's slow eating, the slow food movement I'm sure you know about. And it's the opposite of fast food. Well, this is the slow travel. This is the slow life where you never are oh. in a hurry when it involves another person. I'll tell you why I was in a hurry. Because there was a yeah. butterfly that I wanted to take a photo of that wasn't moving and people, there was a couple there, and they were telling me about this butterfly that's just sitting there on this rock. So that's what it was. So here's a cute story. Right after that, I decided to take a photo of the butterfly, and so I did. And then it still didn't move. And I was, like, mesmerized, going, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> so then I decided, like, well, maybe I could kind of touch him. And I almost touched the butterfly and that's when the butterfly changed right in front of my eyes, the same color as the rock. And I never even knew they oh. did that. <laughs> the butterfly changed color. Right in front of so my the- eyes, the same color as the rock, and then flew away. That's an extraordinary story. It's starting to sound a little Lewis Carroll, isn't it? <laughs> You know, the story that you're telling, in my opinion, we're really binary. We're computers, you know. Yes. Of course, the human mind I created agree. the computer. But it's X zero. I always translate to yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Every ones and, ones and zeros. Every microsecond of your life, you're making decisions. Mm-hmm. You made a decision that gave you an extraordinary experience of a butterfly. Mm-hmm. But you could have decided to stay with the monk. Life is like that. Every microsecond, do I do this or that? Yes or no? Yes, no, no, no. And when you start saying yes, watch what happens. Your computer changes. So true. And also, the matter of going past, and this brings up another subject, going past your comfort level. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're programmed to do things a certain way in a certain time factor, even to stand in a certain position when talking to somebody on the street. Mm -hmm. Other cultures do it differently. They have different, especially among men, different orientations. Do you stand facing each other? How close? Side by side? Uh, And then at what distance does that happen? So there are all kinds of things that go on. But if you go past where what you're used to Mm -hmm. and take a little more time or adjust to the way they're doing it in the place that is hosting you, 
then you are automatically transformed into another set of experiences. Okay, I, th I could throw out a challenge to your listeners. Every listener, by the time you go to bed tonight, <clears throat> you have to have an exchange with somebody who's not the same as you. So it could be that your t telephone service is horrible, well, it usually is here, and you make a service call. And when you make a service call, the person has an accent. And you make a, you say, instead of saying, ah, get over here, my photo, say, oh, what an interesting accent. Where are you from? Oh, Indonesia. I've never been there. Tell me one thing about your culture that would be interesting to me as an American. Just every, just have one exchange with somebody by the end of the day where your curiosity leads you to learn something. It's a start. It's putting your big toe in the water, really, of life, rather than, you know, living on an island mm -hmm. and having an insular life. That's an opinion. That's how to go somewhere when you can't go anywhere. So true. So true. Yes. And j just being genuine and curious and wanting, just smile as you're talking to the other person. I like that because so many magical things even happen to me when I'm changing my airline ticket or anything checking my baggage <laughs> that was left behind because I didn't want to carry too many things to Switzerland. <laughs> and like magic, things just happen. You know, they just send me my bag that home. Is, <laughs> what you said is actually an encapsulation of, of what we've been saying. You leave your baggage behind. <laughs> <laughs> I like you that try, one. You try to leave your baggage behind all the time. But this is the thing. You can't tell somebody about this unless the person wants to expand mm -hmm. wants to have a more interesting life wants to stop posting pictures of a coffee cup every morning unless you you're you're, you're speaking to somebody who has a yearning in the soul for more mm -hmm. for more to have a richer life that the source of your life has mm -hmm. so many ingredients and then I'm telling you, there's a physical challenge. Today, before you go to sleep, have an exchange with somebody. Show curiosity. And you, it becomes a habit. And, you know, Americans are very, very shy about when they're tra especially if they're in a foreign culture. But guess what? America is a foreign culture. Wherever you live, there are pockets of Rastafarians from Jamaica. There are people from, you know, India, from Peru, from... You are surrounded by a world every time you leave your house. It's a travel. But if you seek that out, if you are really curious, and I can guarantee, you just, you just talked about it. What happened when you left your luggage behind going to Switzerland? <laughs> I can guarantee that you will start having what you're calling you know, magic in your life. Magic is always there. It's mm -hmm. a field, but you have to... It doesn't, it doesn't always have to be... Uh, something that you would normally think of as exotic, you can find the exotic in something a little uh, more familiar. For mm -hmm. instance, throughout the United States, we are dotted with pockets of people that have maintained the old country, the culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There'll be, sometimes it's around a religious festival. In Italian mm -hmm. and Polish communities, I know that's definitely true. The Scots have Highland Games, and they're doing all kinds of things from the dancing and bagpipe playing to hurling the caber, which is like throwing a phone pole. It's amazing. <laughs> Look for these events. Usually it's the local people of that uh, heritage that are doing it, but they're also the local people, your friends and neighbors, mm -hmm. and you're invited into something that's familiar, at the same time, exotic. Mm-hmm. You're reminding me of stories. Even in when I lived in New Mexico in Albuquerque, the Klez, oh, what are those? <laughs> I can't think of the name. Klezmer? Yes. Klezmer. <laughs> and joining their parties and things like that. It's so much fun. Dancing, the food. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, right now, it's the holy month of Ramadan for Muslim people. And they don't eat for 24 hours from sun from sunrise until... Uh, sunset, the, well, all day. They don't eat, mm -hmm. and they don't smoke, and they don't drink. 
and it's a spirit. A lot are in bad moods because of that. <laughs> yeah, a lot. yeah, you could be in a really irritable mood. It's hot, and you can't eat, and you're not drinking, and, and you're maybe... not smoking if you're a smoker. <laughs> and then at night, you have a meal, an iftar, to break the fast mm-hmm. every night. Because again, the last meal you eat is dinner, and then you don't eat till the next night, and you break the fast with an iftar. We live, you know how many Muslim people in the United States, but no one's ever heard of an, of an iftar. They don't know that it's the month of Ramadan. You know, you're doing your spiritual practice. What about a spiritual practice where you go without food for one month from sundown to sundown? And, you know, what you're supposed to be refining your spirit and being generous. And, you know, there are a lot of things that go with it. But how could we not know about this? Well, this is how no matter what restrictions there are, you can always travel because you Mm -hmm. develop the mindset of a traveler every time you put your foot out of your apartment, your house, wherever you're living. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love your wise wisdom stories that are sure that you, my audience, everyone might need a seatbelt to be ready to fly out of their seats. (laughs) What a wonderful, (laughs) sweet dear thing of you to say you know in life is a trip i wrote about this woman um i became an apprentice to a healer in central mexico a traditional healer a traditional healer and you know once she taught me how to bring down the power of the moon i worked in her little capilla in her little chapel Mm -hmm. and people came from all over for healing but it's a part of their life it's not an outside mystical thing. They go to the market, they're carrying their bags of fresh produce, fresh produce, not from the supermarket, from the market. And they come into her house because something is bothering them. The, the husband is cheating on them. Their kid is having drug problems. They have a pain in their, you know, whatever. And they come to Anna. And I didn't speak a word of Spanish. She didn't speak a word of English. And I trained as her apprentice. Mm-hmm. And last night, I got a telephone call that Anna is sick, Mm. quite sick, seriously ill, and her daughter called, and I got to remind her, I mean, she's, it's bad, you know, Mm -hmm. and I love her, she's like my hermana, she's my Mm -hmm. sister, and I got to say back to her what she had taught me, because Mm -hmm. now she was the one who was in a a needing situation, Mm -hmm. I love her. I'm in touch with people I wrote about in the book. Well, here's one. One of them, I wrote about a woman in Guatemala. Her kitchen was, th- she's a Mayan woman. She lives in a Maya village. Traditional, very traditional. <clears throat> very, very traditional. And they're weavers with backstrap blooms. That means there's kind of a post in front of them, and they have a belt around their waist, and that's how they're weaving. That's their loom wow. in the air. And um, she is extraordinary. And her kitchen was three stones, three pieces of wood, of coal, mm-hmm. and on top of it she puts a comal, no, was like rock. A rock, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. and she put a grill, a ceramic grill, that's her kitchen, mm-hmm. and when I left, she came up to me, and she said to me, I want to be like you, I said, what? She said, I want to travel, and I'm thinking, yeah, no passport, no education, whatever, and she kept contacting me, and guess what? She figured out how to do it. She was going around places in the United States demonstrating weaving. She had a dream. And I, and you know, never, never disparage someone's dream. Well, her daughter-in-law contacted me. She's a young girl. And she said, you know, we're having such a hard time here. And everybody calls them primitive, mm-hmm. indigenous. You know, indigenous to me is a great thing. You're connected to the mm-hmm. land. But, you know, people look down on them. They have no money. Mm-hmm. Guess what? So the young girl says to me, you know, we, we, we don't have anything now. COVID is so terrible. You know, the pandemic, there's no vaccine. We're all suffering so much. Mm-hmm. She said, so the young people in our village got together, all the kids her age, and they started a market. And she said, I figured out how with the computer that I can buy hand sanitizer and masks and sell it to make a little bit of money to the people in the village. And the whole, all of the kids got together and organized a market. Yeah. How primitive is that? Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful. sophisticated. And if somebody disparages the other sellers, they're excluded from it, from the market. So they discipline themselves. They have their own rules. Look what we have to learn. Mm-hmm. Gosh, what a treat. I can go on and talk to you for hours. I love your stories. I love how you travel and you just go with the flow and, and, you know, you're so open to 
different ethnicities and cultures and religions. I love that. <laughs> but it's yeah. not about me. And for Paul, it's not about Paul. It's always about anda conmigo. Come along with me. Come into this world. Come on, I'll make it safe for you. And then the best thing that can happen is when people contact me and they say, I did it. I went. I met this person. Oh, my God, I had this encounter with this child. Oh, I would never have done that before. Then I feel like I'm doing something on earth other than just using up oxygen. Some years ago, we were invited to a professional travel conference. These were people that organized very high-end tours for alumni associations from Ivy League schools or big societies or industrial captains of industry. Uh, whatever it was, very, very expensive, specialized tours and with select goals in mind. And these are the people that have been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. In the breakout uh, workshop that Judy was teaching, uh, she asked, tell me about one experience that you had that's memorable, that stayed with you, maybe for all your life. And the stories were not about the things that were in their brochures. The Taj Mahal on Camelback by Moonlight, uh, going down the Orinoco River in a luxury. But wasn't that, it was always... Well, we were going through the jungle and the bus got a flat and we met the people in the... It's all these happenstance, serendipitous things. So true. That's what they remember. So true. <laughs> to remind you know, I do me. have one thing. I have one thing that I can um, offer to your listeners. If they're, if they're interested, it's free. That if you send me, I'll tell you how to contact me. Once a month, we send out links to articles we've just written. And, and, photos. and photos, always photos with them. And if they want, and then you can just read about, decide, you know, learn what we're learning. If you're interested, you can contact me and it's free. And, I'll, and I only send it to people I know, but mm -hmm. Tammy is the, um, she's doing the triage because if you listen to her, you would be interested, I believe, in what we have to share with you. Yes. Yes. And the way you can do it, there are two, you just do through the website. It's the easiest way. There are two ways, two uh, different domain names for the website. One is live to leave.com. Mm -hmm. L I V E T O L E A V E.com. Live to leave.com. And the other one, it's the same website, is global adventure. Mm -hmm. It's singular global adventure.us, like United States. And either of these ways, I'd be happy to put you on it, and you'll get the photos, and you'll get the articles. And, and you also get to travel without contagion, <laughs> safe, uh, without jet lag, without lost luggage. But again, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's not about, look at me, look where I go. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's about, come with me. Just come along, and you tell me what you think. That's it. Wow. Well, thank you so much. You know, it's really an honor <laughs> to speak with you both, Paul and Judith. Thank Likewise. you so much. I really, really appreciate this morning chat with you. Same. It was great fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>